Hey, what's going on guys? Coming again Z here. In this video, we're going to learn about indirect addressing in 6502 assembly language. So there are two types of indirect addressing, index indirect and indirect indexed. And probably this is something that uh, brings the most confusion to those who are just getting started with 6502 assembly language. So the purpose of this video is to bring some light uh, on this topic. So if you're interested, without further ado, let's actually start. So we'll start uh, by setting up the value at the certain memory address. And then we're going to be referencing that value uh, using the indirect uh, addressing modes, both of them. All right, so uh, let's say that at the address of 1074 hexadecimal, we want to set the value of whatever value. So let's say here we want to set whatever we have in the uh, A register. And in the A register, we want to load, let's say, I don't know, 45, for instance. Okay, so if I just assemble this and uh, I want to start, start looking for starting from 1000, probably, uh, nope, uh, probably like this, all right? So assemble and run. And what we have here is at the address of, I'm sorry, 1074, 1070, 71, 72, 73, 74 hexadecimal, we have the value of 45. So now, uh, how would we address this using the, so uh, it, the first way to address this is using the absolute mode, which is just going to be like LDA and this. Uh, so just just to give you an idea, like obviously you know this, but anyway, so let's say, uh, <clears throat> for instance, we just, well, I could have reset the LDA like this. So transferring the value from the X register to A register. So symbol run, now A is equal to zero. And now if I say LDA and this 1074, in this case, we have um, we have uh, the value of 45 being loaded from the absolute memory address. But what about the indirect uh, addressing move? So we'll start with the first one, which is called index indirect. And uh, so in order to do this, uh, we first need to go back to our zero pages, right? And in the zero pages somewhere, we'll need uh, to define uh, an address uh, of where are we going to look for the uh, for this kind of uh, value that we need to fetch. So let's say here somewhere at 24, for instance, uh, I want to store the address of 1074. However, uh, if you have a look at the hex dump here, you see like uh, bear in mind the fact, uh, bear, bear in mind the little Andean byte order of 6502 processor architecture. Here uh, we store in this not 1074, but 7410 actually. And this is the exact thing that we want to mimic when we're going to be storing our uh, uh, our uh, absolute address for indirect uh, addressing uh, in the zero pages. So I need to say, uh, I need to store the byte of 74 and next to it, the byte uh, uh, equals to 10 hexadecimal. All right, so, well, let's consider, uh, for instance, so let's say LDA and 74. Uh, and yeah, this is the lower byte, right? So I want to set this at the zero pages, like say 24, for instance, right? And assemble and run. And here, uh, here we have, yeah, 20, 21, 22, 3, 24, 74. And then uh, let's say LDA and 70, uh, sorry, and 10. And I want to store this at 25, right? So assemble, run, and uh, we have 74 and 10. So from now on, uh, uh, we are ready for this uh, indexed indirect uh, referencing uh, of uh, the address that we need. So uh, let's have a look how this works. So uh, for instance, uh, I will initialize, uh, so let's say, let's say I want to say LDA and uh, address of 20 and X. So this is known as indexed indirect addressing, right? And also, yeah, hold on a sec, just, just to make sure uh, everything is working properly. Uh, I just want to, uh, for instance, yeah, like uh, reset the value of 
LDA and yeah and then we we'll also need to load the value of 4 to the X register but let me just talk talk through this first and then we'll see how this works in an example so uh, what happens here so it looks at the address of 20 and it fetches this indirect address but uh, well actually it, it would have been watching uh, uh, it would have been inspecting the memory at, at address 20 so not here really but here and here uh, he will be he will be looking for an address that we need to uh, actually fetch the data from right but this address is actually what we have here and we have zero there so nothing really special so let's say if uh, here I specify some value that it would get loaded to a register so well for instance uh, for instance we can say LDA uh, let's say 10 for instance and STA add the zero page and the very first element so in this case if I did everything properly uh, this should uh, load the value of 10 to the A register and we'll just go with the debugger step by step and then we'll have a look how this X offset is, is working and that's the reason why it's called indexed indirect because we uh, index in uh, like this uh, place where to look for uh, for this indirect address okay so a symbol and let's step in with the debugger okay symbol step in with the debugger so uh, step one 45 to LDA then uh, step two uh, we just store the value of store uh, oh, I'm sorry uh, Yes, let's, let's run again. So symbol. So uh, a register is equal to 45. Step two, uh, we have this uh, 1074 uh, address being initialized with a value of 45. Okay, then uh, we want to load 74 to LDA, and then let's go back to the first pages right so then we set the 74 at uh the zero page address of 24 right then we initially we load 10 to a register and then the next byte we set 10 right uh well then again like we just load this value of 10 well uh, we could have used a different but anyway and now it would be stored here so step and it gets stored here now the most interesting thing so uh, first we'll clear the a register which it is and then uh, so what would what what would be happening now so this line uh, should uh, make the value of a register being equal to 10 but why right so let's say we're going to 20 uh, address 20 plus X so X is equal to 0 so 20 plus X is gonna be 20 and here at address 20 we're looking for an absolute address to fetch the data from and the absolute address is 0000, zero, zero, zero. hence uh, the value which is uh, located there would be fetched so I just tap and we get 10 being loaded so this 10 has been loaded to LZA using this indirect addressing but let's say we, so uh, the most benefit of this method is that we can use X as an offset to the index and that's the reason why it's called indexed indirect so let's say uh, we initialize LDX to the value of 4 right and in this case uh, it would be looking for address right over in here and at this address you remember that we have the value of 45 so if I assemble this and run again we get the value of 45 in the A register so uh, if you didn't understand how this happened, let's just uh, step through again. So step one, loading 45 to A register. And step two, we're storing uh, this 45 at the absolute address of 1074 hexadecimal. That's the address of, of where we're supposed to be fetching uh, this 45 from, okay? Then uh, we are encoding uh, the 1074 address in the little Andean order in the zero pages 24 and 25. So uh, 
the address 24 contains the value of 74, right? Uh, address, so let's tap in. Uh, so address uh, uh, 0 page 24 contains the value of 74. And then um, the address of uh, 0 page 25 contains the value of 10. And here we've encoded the absolute address that we're going to be that we're going to be referencing indirectly uh, in the little endian order because uh, 6502 processor uses the little endian byte order, right? Then, uh, well, uh, th these steps are not essential for this example, so we just load in 10, storing it here. It was used in the previous example. We don't need this really. Then we reset the value of A register by transferring the zero from X to the A register, right? And then we're loading the value of 4 to the X register. So next step, we get this 4. Now, how this is going to be working, so 20 plus X, so 20 plus 4 is going to be 24. So at uh, 0 page uh, 24, we're going to be uh, fetching this absolute address. And then uh, what is going to be loaded into the A register is the value that we have at this address. So if we want to have a look at that again, so we just step, right? And we're referencing the 10, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, 74, which has the value of 45. Oh my God, sorry. Which has the value of 45. And this is the exact value that gets loaded into the A register. So that's how the index indirect address node works. Okay, so I hope that this is clear. And now uh, let's have a look at uh, what is known as indirect index addressing mode. So it's different, the syntax is different, and uh, the way it works is also different. But, uh, well, we can start with probably the same example. So if I just assemble, run. So let's say we have this, we still have this 45 here. And this is going to be the exact value we're going to be fetching from this absolute address of 1074, right? Now let's drop back to the zero pages again. So here, let's say uh, I want to say LDA, for instance, still 74, uh, the value of 74, and I want to store it to. Well, I I can use I can use the same. Uh, let's let's now uh, let's now store it to 24, all right? So symbol run. So yeah, we have the 74 being stored, and then the next. Uh, so here things are getting a little bit tricky. So instead of storing, uh, well, actually, well, I could have stored not 10, not 0, 01, but or hold on a sec. I could have actually. Yeah, instead of uh, storing 74, I would store 70. And here I would store uh, uh, 10, right? All right? Okay, and STA to 25. So symbol run. Uh, so instead of having 74, 10, we have uh, 70, 10. And now we're going to be adding uh, the value of the Y register to this uh, eventual address. So let's have a look how this is working. So um, if I just say, so, well, first, yeah, let's uh, reset the value uh, of a register, right? And then I want to LDY, so load to Y register the value of four, right? The value of four, and then uh, I can say LDA and 24 and now Y. So if I did everything properly, this should fetch the value that we have stored at the absolute address of 1074, which is 45. So let's have a look if this works. Okay, and we get this 45. So now let's break this down and see why, exact, why exactly is this happening. So let's go step by step. Um, so let's start inspecting from this address. So symbol and step with the debugger. So the step one, we're loading 45 to a register. Step two, we're setting the value of 45 to the absolute address of 1074, right? 
then uh, we can drop back to the zero pages again so we're loading the value of 70 uh, so absolutely remember the absolute address is 1074 but we're loading the value of 70 not 74 but the 70 to the a register and setting this at uh, in this in the zero pages address 24 here it is right and then the value of 10 to the next memory cell so the absolute address that we're going to be fetching indirectly and this is known as indirect index indexed indirect index so uh this uh, address that we're going to be fetching indirectly is going to be equal to 1070 right and uh so yeah the next step we just reset this a register then we're loading the offset of four uh, the value of four to the y register and the y register in this case is serving as an offset but not to the index uh like in the previous part to look for uh this indirect address but actually to index the indirect address on its own and that's the reason why it's called indirect index so we have this indirect address of 1070 uh in little indian uh, by order it's, it looks as 7010 but in the uh, in the real life this is like 1070 and then we want to index this 1070 by the offset that is stored in the y register so this is going to be 1070 plus 4 so this is going to be 1074 and now uh if we want to and now the value though actually would be loaded into the uh into this a register is going to be the value that is stored at uh 1070 plus y which is equal to 4 or 1074 so we step the next value and we got it right so we got the value of 45 from the absolute address 1074 which was obtained by 1070 plus the offset of y and there we have the address of 45 and that is the exact value that we actually uh, can write into uh, we, we can load into the a register so this is pretty much all about it guys and uh, it doesn't only work for LDA instruction but for SDA uh, and I, I believe for ADC and SB, S, SBC right so adding with carry and subtracting with carry as well so let's have a quick look of how this can work actually so let's say for instance uh what kind of value did we so we had the value so before uh before clearing before clearing this we had the value of uh symbol just want to quickly stop with the debugger okay 70 and 10 and why yeah so now we have the value of 10 uh, in the A register. So let's say instead of loading the data to the A register, we can use STA here. And this would replace this 45 with the current value we have in the A register, which is 10. So if I did everything properly, uh, using exactly the same indirect index to dress in mode, we will now replace the value at the memory. So if I just assemble and run again, and we have, it has been replaced with the value of 10, which was the exact value that a register was holding or let's say we want to add uh, let's say the same idea so we have 10 in the a register uh, and we want to add uh, the value from what was there before which was 45 to the a register so this is going to be uh, 10 hexadecimal plus 45 hexadecimal well I, I can't say how much that would be but if we just say add with carry and assemble and run and we have this yeah 55 oh yes it's pretty simple so 10 plus 45 yes 55 but in hexadecimal this is the same so here uh we did use this indirect indirect index addressing mode to uh to be applied for add with carry for instance so all the instructions that does support that do su that do or do support or does support that do support yeah all the instructions that do support uh the this indexed indirect and indirect index addressing modes uh can uh use uh this method that's been shown here in this video so uh yeah this is it from my side guys i hope you learned something interesting out of this tutorial so thanks for watching until the next time and take care